and welcome to the Overshadow Shadow cast with your hostess Abigail. I'm back, yes, and thank you to Tommy for covering for the last couple of weeks. Uh, me and I could have a, like, a nice little break. So, like he said, we might be doing this one, him doing it one week, me doing it the other, so it's my turn this week. We're going to see how this goes. So, I'm just going to start off by going into what I've been playing. So, I have been playing this week GTA 5 single player. So I have been continuing with my venture into GTA 5 as I was instructed to get to a certain point before I'd be allowed to play with others. Made me feel like a bit like a five-year-old <laughs> doing that. Um, so everything for a while seemed to be really slow and kind of got very boring for me as I was told to keep calling people and to like hang out with them to progress the story. Basically Tommy advised me to do that. He was also the one who said I couldn't play with anybody to like got to a certain point in the game. But just kind of going around just calling people and asking them to hang out, like that got very boring and also it kind of just got me nowhere. So I went back into record, uh, not recording, sorry, <laughs> uh, playing this, the main story and just going to kind of like, it tells me to go there, so I'm just going to go there kind of thing. So I eventually, like I said, just went back to playing it and just like grind through the story as much as possible. So I was able to actually complete my first heist which actually happened a lot faster than I thought it was going to be. I thought this was going to be like a really slow build up, but actually it happened pretty quickly. And everything went pretty smoothly, which I thought was great. And it was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Unfortunately, I forgot to record because I just kind of just wanted to play it. And then I was like, oh, I think that's, oh yeah, I was supposed to record that. Totally forgot. So I can only apologize for not doing that. I liked the fact that when you select your crew you're in, you're actually able to do that you're allowed to select people you're allowed to go through it looking at all their skills and everything like that and also an advantage of being able to select your crew is that each crew member will take a portion of the cut from the actual heist itself so for example like from uh the the tech guy i can't remember what it's what he's called the tech not the tech wizard that's me apparently um <laughs> Uh, the guy who's kind of like instructor is going to be in charge of all the technical aspects. I chose the guy who's going to take the smallest percentage purely because I thought that'd be fun to see to see if he's going to screw up a lot. And I think it was all right. Like I said, it went pretty smoothly. The only time, the only reason I had to replay that mission itself was because um, as Franklin, I fell off my motorbike and then I lost the other guys. I wasn't able to get back to my bike quickly enough. I literally hit a lamppost and flew. I like I felt like half a mile up a road. And then I went to go back to get my bike and then I failed because I lost track of the other heist guys. So apart from that, everything kind of just went pretty smoothly for that point. So it's actually really interesting because the coverage of on the news of the heist is what actually leads you to be kind of like introduced and also kind of effectively reintroduced to Trevor, a member of the original bank heist with uh, Michael in the tutorial. So I wasn't sure what I think of Trevor, but their first first impression wasn't the best. And if you've ever played the game, you'll probably understand why that is. Uh, I think I've got footage of it. I'm not going to show that because it was just a bit too grisly. Uh, for the best, for the, I don't know if my mic picked that up. A train went by, and I could just hear, hear it vibrating through the microphone. Um, where was I? Oh no, I forgot where it was. Oh yeah, so so it's a bit grisly when you first meet him but however the more I played my opinion somewhat shifted a little bit from really not liking this guy to somewhat liking it. Um, I really like the way he interacts with other characters in the game although he is very very unhinged. My favorite bit of dialogue is actually um, between him and another character I think her name was Maud. It's gonna look really stupid if I get that wrong. So Maud is kind of like into bounty hunting and what she does is she basically kind of contracts Trevor out to go hunt down these bail bond jumpers and then he collects them and then he gets actually a cut of the money. He's actually pretty well, he's a pretty wealthy guy. When I actually saw how much money he had, I was like, whoa, that's a lot. It's, I, I think it's because he's like, um, he's into a drug business type of thing. I think he's got a meth lab. But the interaction between these two characters, I, I genuinely just love it. It's so funny because it just everything just sounds so normal between them and everything Trevor actually says sounds very very normal but like I said he is incredibly unhinged but the things he comes out with is just hilarious half the time like sometimes there's a part in it where it 
he and Michael are being reintroduced to each other. Like, he just kind of walks into Michael's house. And it's a very, very threatening situation. It looks very, very scary. And then Michael finds out that his eldest daughter is going to be on a TV show. I think it's called Fame or Shame. I think that was the name of the show. It's a bit like Merrick Pop Idol or something like that. Or America's Got Talent. That's what it sounds like. That's what it looks like. And Michael's like really, really upset by this. And he's like, oh, I can't believe she's going to do this. And then Trevor's just like, no, I'm not going to have, I think your name is Tracy, little Tracy, go and, and be on this show. Come on, we need to go. And it's like every bad thought he had about Michael is just like instantly gone. Oh, he's focused on his trying to save this, like, uh, Tracy from like embarrassing herself. I actually find something like that very, very funny. And kind of his his actions are terrible terrible sometimes you're like is his morals in the right place i don't think they are but it's funny just to watch that kind of kind of aspect of it but what like that kind of just like leads me into the kind of like the negatives of the game if i had never played gta as any of the other characters i'd probably have the same opinion of the game as many people do playing as trevor that it's violent grim and disgusting However, I know this is only one character in a vast game with multiple different kinds of characters. With Trevor having such terrible characteristics, it actually really highlights the good in Franklin and Michael. But sometimes they do very questionable things uh, within the story mode like, without you prompting them to do anything. They they they'd also do quite uh, not great stuff. But best way to describe it, I guess. But the fact that Trevor's such a bad character and he does such terrible 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 things that actually shows you just like how calm michael and franklin actually especially michael because he was like the original heister kind of guy how calm and relaxing they are because trevor is basically just a bomb waiting to go off there's a part where you can go into like a rage berserk mode like that's actually one of the missions in the game it's very bizarre playing that i find because yeah i i understand this is just a game it's just a game but I can I can kind of get a sense of when people talk about how these games could why they th why they think it promotes violence but it, it really doesn't but I can I can kind of get why people have such a bad viewpoint of GTA in, in a certain way but like I say when you have a character that's just as bad as that it really highlights just how good the other characters actually are so that's what I've been playing and apparently I've gotten to the point I've actually surpassed the point where I can now I am now privileged enough to be able to allow to play with other people apparently i've been very good i can go out and play with everybody else so i'm not having a go i'm not having a go trying to make a joke apparently i don't make jokes very well sorry about that so i'm going to move on to uh just a couple of stories for you guys today like um i've not really had that much time to be able to really go into anything in depth there's i think like a lot of people at the moment um personal personal stuff is kind of going a bit haywire at the moment so i've been kind of focusing on that a little bit more than being able to focus on this unfortunately i'll go into the first story i have for you guys today so this is kind of like a call back to what tommy was going to speak about last week i thought he was going to be talking more about the actual launch and the design of the ps5 and he i think he basically just kind of talked about the games which is fair enough so i'm just going to talk about the actual design of it i can't really go into the technical aspect of it because i have no idea what any of the technical technical aspect means to me i think tommy would probably be a better one to talk to you guys about that because i even though he calls me a tech wizard all i know is how to set up a microphone and edit that is it i i've got no real ass concept of anything technical other than that um, <laughs> so first off i'd like to give my feedback on my thoughts on the new ps5 as opposed to the old ps5 the new ps which is the ps5 at least on the aesthetics of it um, I'm not sure how I feel about the look of the console. I had seen pictures of it before I actually won went and watched the trailer of the PS5 collection. I call it a collection because there's other things in that advert. I had also seen mock-ups and people basically just taking the rip out of the design. One I saw had a coffee machine with a PS5 logo on it, on the, kind of like on the front of it and it actually took me about a minute to realize I was actually looking at a coffee machine I wasn't looking at the PS5 I think it was um the I'm trying to think of what it's called or oh, I'm blanking it's the uh thumbnail I think it was the thumbnail of PewDiePie's reaction to it and I saw a picture of the coffee machine I also put a picture of him looking like Doofenshmirtz Doof Doofenshmirtz 
from Phineas and Ferb. <laughs> I thought that was genuinely quite brilliant. But like I said, it, yeah, it's not great in my opinion. I just want to know why a console needs a collar. Why? Because it really does look like he's got a, it's somebody with a collar on. That's what it genuinely looks like to me. Um, I honestly think that if they had just gone with a streamlined design with uh, the black and white color scheme, it would have looked great. It would have looked amazing. But for some bizarre reason, they didn't do that. But to be fair, the new Xbox and PS5 will not be confused for each other. I think that when you see something that looks like a giant cuboid, I think that's what it's called. Is that a cuboid? No, cube, cuboid. Yeah, it must be a cuboid uh, of the Xbox and this very alien looking PS5. You're not going to get those two confused with each other. And something else that actually bothered me from watching the trailer was I did go and watch it. It, it had like a close up of the, not the inside, but the, the inside white panel. And it looks like it's textured. Just nope, 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 nope. I really don't like that. It reminds me of textured wallpaper. Now we have got textured wallpaper in, in, in our house and I really don't like it. I, it's just, I don't know what it is. It's just, it gives, nah, don't like it. I do not like it. Um, but however, some positives, I do like the look of the accessories that actually come with it. So uh, the dual controller, the dual sense controller, I think looks amazing. I think that's very stylish, very sleek, as well as the head, I believe it had headphones or remote control. Um, I think it had a camera as well with it. Yeah, I think all that looks absolutely stylish and sleek. I just do not know what went wrong with the console. I just don't. It looks dated. I think genuinely in the, P the PewDiePie video I watched, he said that this looked like what we, what we thought the future was going to look like. And yeah, that is, that is what it looks like. It looks like somebody from the 90s went, this is what the future is going to be. Let's make that so it has a dated look and especially if it does have a textured inner like inner panel no 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 but then again i've not seen it in person i've not no not many people will have seen it in person as of now um and as we all know the camera can only pick up a certain amount of what the actual human eye can pick up so Maybe it's not going to be as textured as I think it is. Maybe it's actually going to look very much sleeker in person. And maybe we will, in the future, rant, rant and rave about how amazing this console actually looked. So that's really all I have to say on the aesthetics of the PS5. I, was like, I remember we talked about it was going to look like a bit like a spaceship. And I didn't like that look. I did not like that look of that spaceship. Tommy did, I think. And then there was like a streamlined version. I thought that, that looked pretty good. But this one, I just think... I don't know. It just looks really... It looks like a... It genuinely looks like a villain from a sci-fi movie's coat. It just, it looks like Doofin' Schmerz. That's what it looks like. So the second story I have for you guys today, it's, gonna, it's the last story. Um, so the sequel to the much anticipated, anticipated The Last of Us has finally been released. Now, to give you a bit of background, The Last of Us was about the journey of Joel and Eddie, Ellie, Eddie, Joel and Eddie. Joel and Ellie across the USA in a post-apocalyptic post world ravaged by zombie-like creatures and terrible human beings in hopes that Ellie may hold the key to a cure for the disease turning people to monsters. I think Ellie in this is supposed to be about like 12 or 13 years old and Joel I think is supposed to be quite middle-aged like in his late 40s, early 50s and it's it was yeah that's pretty much what it was. They were just traveling across the country trying to find out if Ellie actually holds a cure to the zombies. Um, the game itself was an instant classic and within its first seven days sold 1.3 million copies, with it selling 3.4 three weeks later. Now every gamer worth their salt was playing this game and had hundreds of thousands of viewers flocking to watch the story unfold. Now I've spoken a more I've spoken before about how there was an exhibit in a museum I went to and I went into how they created the game, the co character concept designs, just kind of like everything, the motion captures, everything about it. And it really was truly amazing just how much effort they actually put into this game. It looked phenomenal. Now, The Last of Us 2 has, in its first week of sales, sold 76% more than the original did in 2013. And has beaten Uncharted 4 to become the fastest selling game on PS4 by 1%. 
Now, I haven't gone and watched people play this yet. I'm going to wait till there's enough plays are up to binge watch it, but I am seriously looking forward to it. But I mean, The Last of Us won so many awards. It's it's insane just how popular that game actually did. I mean, there were other games that have been popular over the last few years, like Until Dawn, um, like I said, Uncharted 4, and you've got Animal Crossing, it's outsold Animal Crossing. The Last of Us, and people were trying to comment that the reason, possibly the reason for the intake and sales is because of the controversies that were happening kind of just beforehand, the, the possible leaked information on it. I don't think it is. I think that it had to fall on the merits of the first game. That second game can only, your second game can only be as as popular as it is if the first one is good. That first game was amazing. I never played it, but I watched it. And from a storyteller's point of view, I thought it was absolutely phenomenal. I really enjoyed it. I liked Yes, it kind of played on certain tropes. The idea is that within the first 10-15 minutes of The Last of Us, Joel loses his daughter. His daughter is roughly the same age as Ellie is when he meets her. So it's kind of like him kind of being like a begrudged old man trying to open up his heart again to some, to help another kid out. So yes, that's kind of like a tried and tested method. But it was still outstanding. Everything was great. This music was great. I've heard the music track on the adverts to this game. I've not actually watched the full trailer, but you hear... I suppose I have actually, but it's been on television. Stupid me. Uh, and it, it just looks amazing. It sounds amazing. And I can, I can, I just can't wait to actually watch people play it. I don't think there's any hope of me actually being able to play it. I think it's purely on PS4 at the moment. But yeah, I'm I'm seriously looking forward to it. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, so I think Tommy's going to be here next week and we'll see what he's going to be talking about. We are possibly going to be trying to play GTA Online with uh, two other people, but the audio has been a big, big issue for us. Trying to capture the audio, trying to match up the audio, because whenever I try putting any playthroughs through the editing software I have, for some reason, the audio and the video do not match up. I don't know why that is. I think it's something to do with the frame rate. I'm trying to sort that out. Um, but it looks like this is going to be a massive project and I really hope it works out properly. Yeah, I'm just, <laughs> just, just really hoping it works. Just really hoping it works out. But like I said, we're still having issues with the audio and everything like that. But we're trying out different things. So hopefully that's going to work. And hopefully we're going to get some play, f some footage, some footage. Everything's kind of up in the air at the moment with certain other things that are going on. Um, we are, we're, I think both me and Tommy are greatly aware of the fact that this has not been as good as when we are both in the same room together. It doesn't look like we're going to be able to get together for quite some time yet, like the rest of the world. But we're trying to make the best of it that we can. And hopefully we are entertaining you in some ways. I actually got a compliment from the from from Tommy the other, the other week about my about my crashing sequence on GTA. So I did that in the editor. Apparently, they really enjoyed that. Hopefully, everybody else did as well. But you can leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this. Let um, us know. Have you played The Last of Us Two yet? Are you going to play it? What do you, what do you guys actually think of the new design for the PS Five? Do you think it looks a bit outdated? Do you think it looks like super villain slab coat? let me know. You can email us also at overshadow.shadowcast and you can find us on Facebook at overshadow.shadowcast at face. I'm getting confused with what I'm saying. You can email us at overshadow.shadowcast at gmail.com and you can find us at over on Facebook. Facebook at overshadow.shadowcast. Um, so yeah, just leave a comment. Leave a, send us a message. Let us know what you're thinking. Uh, let us know if you'd like us to discuss anything. If Is there a big topic that you'd like us to, to discuss? But sometimes we miss things. Uh, because of the, la the, the delay in recording this to actually editing it and then putting it up, it's a few days. For me, anyway, it's a few days. I think Tommy literally waits till Wednesday to record this. And I'm like, no, do it a few days before. <laughs> do it a few days before. Uh, it gives me anxiety when it goes up at like... 11 59 on a wednesday it really does i'm like no so hope you guys are all staying safe and well out there and i hope that you guys can join us next week um i think that's all the information i had to relate to you 
I'll probably have missed something out and I'll get a wrap on the knuckles or a virtual wrap on the knuckles for missing something out. But anyway, thank you guys for listening. Thanks guys for staying staying with us and staying kind of like with us during the time when it's not all that great. Okay, thanks guys. Bye.